going to continue from where we stopped in the last um, video. All right. So in today's video, we want to continue with configuring our Kubernetes cluster. So if you look here, this is the Kubernetes cluster we deployed um, in the last video. So the Kubernetes cluster is ready. As you can see, it's um, green already. Now, when you have a Kubernetes cluster, there is what you call a kube config file, which basically contains the credentials that you need to authenticate with your Kubernetes um, cluster. Now, before you can interact with a Kubernetes cluster, of course, you need a Kubernetes client in order to interact with your Kubernetes cluster through the CLI. So if you don't have the kubectl installed already, which is the Kubernetes uh, command line tool, if you don't have it installed already on your system, you have to um, quickly do that, right? So for example, I am using a Windows machine, so I can go to uh, chocolate, for example, all right? So I can search for chocolate here, click on that. And then right here, I can come to um that should be let me see let's click on the community okay and then here i'll click on find packages all right and of course you'll see i understand and here i can search for kubectl okay and then i should be able to uh, find that right here so let's take a look and let's see if we're able to find that all right so this is the kubernetes cli so perhaps this is what you will have to install if you're using uh, windows right so you can copy these and then use the choco install to do that so i'm going to link a video all right in the description that shows you how to install your tools using chocolatey all right so that is what you have to have so you have to have these um, kubectl installed on your um, system to allow for uh, communication with your Kubernetes cluster. Now, once that is done, if you come over here to your Kubernetes, you know, cluster on DigitalOcean, as with every Kubernetes that you create on any cloud provider, all right, there's the kubeconfig file. So here, I'm going to download the configuration file. So I'm going to click on that. Okay, to download it, and I'm going to basically download that into this repo. So I'm going to create a folder. Okay, and I'm going to call that folder. All right, cube config. I mean, just to store a Kubernetes file right inside of that. Okay, so now if I go back to my project, I have the cube config, and if I click on it, I will basically see the configuration file. So here, you can see the all right, the certificate, you can see the endpoint, which is the Kubernetes endpoint, and then you can see the name, you can see the name of the cluster, the user, which is the admin user, all right, and then you can also see the kind, which is, I mean, it's a configuration file, which gives you access to your Kubernetes cluster. Now, if you already have the kubectl installed, you can actually use this configuration file to interact with your Kubernetes cluster. All right, so how, what do you do? Now, the first thing you can do here is to maybe probably reduce um, the permission that you have, you know, to this particular configuration file. Now, on AWS, when you want to um, interact with any Linux machine, AWS will usually advise that you do ch mode all right, 400 on your keypad to basically make it read only, right? So that is the same thing we're also going to do here. So we basically want to make this configuration file a read only file, right? So we're going to come here and then we're going to say ch mode and the configuration file is inside of the cube config file, all right? Oops, sorry. So let me go out. I'm, I'm actually inside of a shopping cart. So I'm just going to go outside of that and then ch mode. 400 so the folder is kubeconfig and the name of the file is this right here so i'm going to basically change that so now if i do ls i fin l okay and i do that on the kubeconfig kate all right i can see that now it is read only okay so that is what we want to achieve so now how do we use this 
configuration file to basically interact with a Kubernetes cluster. So here you can do export, all right, and then cube config. I mean, just to export out a variable. So cube config can be equal to okay this particular folder. So the folder is cube config, and the file is this. So you're exporting this, all right. Um, file and then you're putting that into the variable cube config. So now using the export keyword basically makes the variable available. I mean, within this terminal that we have. So I can come here now and say kubectl right cluster. I can say cluster I think info. Okay, to basically just check the information of my cluster. So if I press enter and if everything is fine, then I should see this information. So keep control plane is running at this URL. The core DNS is also running at this particular URL. So with the information that we can see here on the screen, it basically tells us that we are able to access our Kubernetes or right, cluster. So that particular aspect is all right completed. Now, another thing that I want to point your attention to is the fact that this configuration file that you see here is basically all right a configuration file that gives you more like a full access to your cluster because i mean it's an admin you know configuration file so which means we might have to i mean at in fact we you know might we actually have to create a configuration file for the gitlab user because we do not want the gitlab user to have all right, on filtered access to the cluster. So we want to basically restrict access to a particular namespace that the GitLab user can deploy, all right, our jobs to, okay? So that is what we want to do exactly. So we do not want the GitLab user to have the admin privileges to be able to do anything within a Kubernetes environment. We just want to restrict right access to a particular namespace, and then the GitLab user will be able to interact just with that all right namespace and that is what we want to do and that is actually best practice because it follows what you call the principle of least privilege which basically is giving people access just to do what they are supposed to do and nothing more all right so let's see how that can be done so the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to create a namespace i'm going to say kubectl create Okay, so I'm going to create a namespace, and of course, we can call it anything. So create namespace. All right, and the namespace that I'm going to create here will basically be, um, let's call it microservice, right? So kubectl create namespace microservice. All right, so the namespace has been created. Now, of course, if you do kubectl get namespace, all right, I mean, you can see all the namespaces that we have. So the cube system, cube public, and micro, you know, service. So the microservice namespace is what we want the GitLab user to be able to interact with. We do not want the GitLab, you know, user to be able to interact with the cube system or any other namespace, all right? We only want the, you know, the GitLab user to interact with the microservice namespace. So we've created a namespace, and the next thing will be to create a service account. All right, so kubectl create. All right, so you say service account. So the service account is what the GitLab user is going to use. So the name of the service account, I'm going to call it GitLab I think SA, all right, to basically specify that this is a service account for GitLab. And then the namespace um, where I'm creating the service account. So the namespace is going to be equal to Okay, the namespace that we just um, created, and that is microservice. All right, so the service account has also been created. Now, another thing that you also have to do is to create what you call um, a role, right? Now, the purpose of creating a role is basically to give, um, you know, your the GitLab service account to basically restrict the permission. That is what the role is meant for. 
So we've created the namespace, we've created a service account. So we need to define the boundaries, you know, of the, the permission that the GitLab service accounts can actually operate within. Okay, and that is where the role comes into the picture. I'm sure some of us must have heard about, you know, role-based access control and all those kind of things. So that is exactly what we're trying to do here. So the service account is what GitLab is going to be, is going to use to deploy to the Kubernetes cluster. But we need to define a role that basically specifies what the service account is able to do within our Kubernetes cluster. Okay, so we're going to create that and that is going to be so here inside of this kube config file i'm going to create so here i'm going to create a file here so i'm going to call the name of the file so inside of this kube config folder i'm going to create a file and i'm going to call it um gitlab s a right iphone rule dot yaml all right and then i'm going to paste this here so here I'm going to change this. So the name of the namespace is microservice. All right. So now this is all right, a role that I'm creating. So like I told us, it's a role based access control. So the kind is role. All right. And then the namespace that I'm creating the role for is actually microservice. All right. I mean, that's the namespace that we have right here. Okay, and the name of the role, of course, the name of the role can be anything actually. So we can just say GitLab CI CD role. Okay, it can be anything as far as it makes sense, right? So GitLab CI CD role. So now these are the rules that we're specifying. So basically, what we're doing is that we're creating a role, all right, for this particular namespace, and that role will allow, you know, whichever service account we associate this role with we'll be able to interact with ports we'll be able to interact with services and be able to do some you know some kind of secret because at the end of the day your kubernetes cluster will have to pull from your gitlab or right you know registry so you're pushing your images to gitlab registry kubernetes cluster has to pull all right from that registry so it needs some kind of secret to do that all right so basically here what we're doing is that we want our service account which we're going to attach this role to to be able to interact with our ports but that interaction is limited to this namespace okay so the interaction is limited to this namespace so we should be able to interact with ports with services and with secret and what is this you know role able to do or the service account that would basically assume this role is will be able to get will be able to list will be able to watch create update patch delete and you know all of that so that is basically what we want to do so here now with this configuration that we have we can actually apply these to the kubernetes cluster Right, and let's see how that goes. So I'm gonna come in and say kubectl, right, apply. Okay, so apply is basically a declarative command, right? So because, I mean, in Kubernetes, you have create and you have apply. Now, both of them actually perform the same function. But let me just state it here. The create command is actually an imperative command, right? So that means when you're using the create command, if what you're trying to create is already present the create command is going to return an error okay but then when you're using the apply command the apply is declarative which means this is the state that i want and so if that thing has already been achieved the apply command is basically not going to give you any error because i mean it's just going to tell you what you are trying to do is already there right but the create command because it's imperative we we'll try to still create a thing again and then at the end of the day it can count as an error because what you're trying to create is already available so i'm going to say kubectl apply so the file that i want to apply you use iphone a flag to specify that and that file is in the kube config folder and the name is gitlab all right you know s arrow or yaml so i'm going to put enter okay and yes so the role based access control has been created so now we've created the namespace, we've created a service account, and we've also created a role. So the next thing you need to do now is to basically associate all the three things together. So you have to associate the role to the service account, all right? And of course you tie it to the namespace and all of that. So we need to do these things. So the role, the service account, and the namespace will have to be tied together. 
So how do we configure that? So here we basically just say kubectl create. All right, so what are we creating? We're creating a role binding. All right, so we're creating a role binding. So what you can call the role binding any name. So I'm just going to call the CICD, all right, out of B, or we can just say git lab, all right, role binding. I mean, that's the name of the role binding that we created. So now we are, you're binding three things. So you're binding the role to the service account and of course to the namespace. All right. So the first thing we need to specify here is the role. So what's the name of the role that we are binding? So the role is going to be equal, all right, to this. So this is the name of the role that we created. So we can grab that, all right, like this, and then we can put that here. All right. So that's the name of the role. So the next thing is to associate this with the service account. So service account. So the service account is going to be equals to first the namespace, right? So microservice, all right, colon, all right, the name of the service account. So what's the name of the service account that we created? So the name of the service account that we created is this GitLab SA. So I'm going to copy that and then put that here, all right? So the role and then the service account. So you're binding the role and the service account together. And lastly, you'll specify the namespace, all right? So the namespace also is micro, all right, service, all right? That's the namespace. So you press enter. And if everything is fine, you have your role binding or right, created. So now you have the role associated with a service account and of course tied to a particular namespace all right so we have created that now another thing that i need to mention here another thing i need to mention here is that um you know starting from kubernetes 1.24 upwards normally when you create um a when you create a role binding right or when you create a service account and all that you should actually you know, get a secret that will be created for you, but that does not apply anymore, right? So you have to do that um, yourself. So a few commands that we can actually run, so we can do kubectl, all right? So we can say get, you know, service, service account, all right, iPhone n to specify the namespace. So the namespace is microservice, Okay, so here you can see that we have the GitLab SA, right? But then it does not have any secret created. So that does not apply um, anymore, actually, right? But of course, you can also do another thing. You can say kubectl get, all right, service account, and then you can specify the name of the service account. So the name of the service account here is GitLab SA. All right, and then you can specify the namespace, all right, like this. And of course, you can put your iPhone O and then say YAML. I mean, you want it to output it in a way that, you know, makes uh, a little more sense. All right, so from what you have here, you don't have any kind of secret created or any token at all created because what we want to do is we're going to basically copy this config file and replace all right, these, you know, token that we have here. So this token that we have here, we're going to replace it with, you know, the token of the service account because we're not going to be using this configuration file to access our cluster because at the end of the day, you want to copy this config file and then hand that over to GitLab. So if GitLab is going to be using this configuration file, then that means GitLab will have unfiltered access to your cluster. So what we want to do is to duplicate this configuration file and then change the token that we have here to the token of the service account. All right, so that whatever GitLab is going to do will be limited to the namespace, all right, that we have created. And that is exactly what we want to achieve. So how do we um, handle that? So we're gonna run an, we're gonna run another command again. Okay, and this time around the command is kubectl Okay, and then you say create, all right, token. So you want to create a token. And of course, if you're stuck or you need help, you can also do iPhone iPhone help to basically um, just check for, you know, help. I mean, options that you can use 
if you feel that something is not you know right and all of that right so here so keep ctl create token and then we we have to specify the service account so the service account is gitlab all right i see that's the service account and of course we specify the namespace so the namespace that we're dealing with is microservice all right and then we press enter so that's going to generate um, a token for us i mean there's a token that has been generated for us so we need to copy this token all right and make use of it um within the configuration file all right so that means we have to copy this token all right and basically just use it as is all right so that is what we want to do oh, so what i'm going to do is i'm going to duplicate this all right so let's copy and let's paste okay so we've copied and pasted that all right so this is what we want to rename so let's rename that all right to git lab all right i finesse a all right i mean service accounts config so let's just Keep it like that. Okay, so that's the configuration file for that. So here, what we what we're going to do here is, I mean, it's just something that is very simple. Okay, so here the server remains the same. Okay, and the certificate authority data also remains the same. Okay, so the only thing that we will change here. All right, is basically the user. So the user, instead of saying the user is admin, we can basically come here and say, well, you know what? We don't want to have admin at the back. So you can change this one to GitLab, all right, CI CD. Okay, that was an odd. Okay, um, now you can see that it's telling us that it is not writable. And that is because of the um, chmod 400 that we need. Okay, so that is why it is giving us um, this particular error okay so that is understandable so here i'm going to come here uh, for the user also um, so i can just copy the name at the back here all right copy that and then change that here to this so for the token i would have to remove this token here all right and then i will have to copy this particular token generated by the service account and pull that right here okay so that is the token that we'll be using all right so that's the token that we will want to use okay all right so now we have a new configuration file all right so we would have to test this configuration file to basically see you know what we can do with this you know new configuration file i mean we're still using the admin configuration file so that means if i still come here and do kubectl all right so kubectl get note i mean i can still see certain information all right and if i come here and say kubectl get name all right space i can still see all of the namespaces but with the new configuration file that we have we shouldn't see all right all the other namespaces except our own all right namespace that's the only thing we should see actually all right so let's test this out but of course we've not been able to save it yet so we would have to find a way around that so we can just do ch mode for now all right to save this and just do ch mode um so let's do 666 okay and the file is inside here all right gitlab sa config all right that's the name of the file okay so the file is now writable so let's try to save all right so i just did ctrl s and i'm able to save all right the file so what we're going to do here now is to do export i mean we're going to export again to q config it will be equal to q config gitlab sa config right so we're basically using that. So now if I do kubectl get node, all right, let's see. So now it is telling me that what forbidden. So which means the service account does not have access to do what I'm trying to do. Okay, but then if I come in and say kubectl, 
get port hyphen n all right in the microservice namespace then it will tell me that no resources found in the microservice namespace so that is to show you that yes the service accounts can do whatever it wants to do within all right the microservice namespace but of course it doesn't have access to any other thing within a kubernetes cluster except to just create deployment within all right the microservice namespace so and this configuration file right here all right this one right here is all we're going to copy to the gitlab all right ci account i mean this is the configuration file that our gitlab is going to use to deploy our job is that okay all right so now what's the next thing we need to do so we have created a configuration file the configuration file has been tested so now it's time to start writing all right our pipeline script i mean that's the next thing we need to do so we need to start populating the gitlab ci that we have here for each of the all right applications so that's the next thing we need to do so we need to start you know right in the pipeline script okay so that is all we're going to do all right so in the next video we're going to see how to start um, writing all of that okay so thank you so much and i'll see you in the next video